Okay, we're ready to get started now. Um, I just wrote you an agenda that I'm going to do, and uh, I'll keep you informed on the rest of today's agenda. So right now, I'm uh, going to do, I've requested to do number three from Thursday's assignment. Uh, later, I'll do all five problems for you um, uh, from Friday's assignment. Um, again, it would be really nice to get more feedback, but some kid did ask me to do this uh, uh, for them. So I will. We have two congruent cones uh, sharing the same radius, uh, the, uh, the same um, circle here, the same base, if you like, and the diameter is 10, and the height of the whole figure is 18. So all I have to do is figure out uh, what the um, volume is. So um, there are two of these guys, since they're congruent, and it's one-third... Uh, Careful, and this is probably the mistake that the, uh, the other per the, the person who sent me the letter made. Half of uh, 10 is 5. You always have to keep that in mind. Uh, and then again, um, one of the cones is 9. Okay? So when we do that, we simplify first to make our math easy. There's the pi, which I omitted. And I end up with 2... Uh, 75 pi, and that immediately works out to 150 pi. So watch it when they give you the data. They're perfectly entitled, and it will happen on your on this multiple choice test that I'm going to give you. They'll give you data and diameter. They're allowed to do that. Okay, moving on quickly. Uh, in video 18, I believe it was. Uh, I don't have my notes right in front of me. Uh, yes, it was video 18. Uh, I asked you to find the diagonal uh, when the edge of a cube, when the uh, edge is uh, two units instead of one unit, and I added that I wanted you to do the sum of both of them. So I wanted you to do this problem, or at least try it, because something weird happens here, and that takes us to some math I plan to teach you a little bit about. So let's just go back to what we were doing before. It's always good to do things a couple of times. I'll get rid of this little diagonal here. And remember, I call this x, and I call this y. And only the data have changed since the cube is um, a two-unit cube. So let's do the math now. We have uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we know that... Um, uh, we need to find x uh, first, so we have our diagonal here, and we have this new triangle, as I explained to you uh, on Friday. So let's pull, uh, pull in the data here. 2 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared, as done before. 4 plus 4 equals 8, so x squared equals 8. And that means that x equals the square root of 8, as been discussed so many times. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm going to keep that in mind. I might come back to this number here. Um, this number needs to be simplified. We're going to talk about that a little bit. So anyway, I'm um, still not done. Uh, so there's my two. There's my triangle. Again, I'm trying to make sure that weaker students see what I'm doing. There's my right triangle, my right triangle. And now... Um, I have eight square root of 8 squared, okay, there we go, that number that I just got for the diagonal of the base there, uh, plus 2 squared, I'm referring to this guy right here, is going to equal the hypotenuse, which is of course what we're looking for, equals y squared. So when I do the math there, as explained before, the square, uh, the square root of a square is the number under the radical sign, plus 4 equals 12, and we immediately conclude uh, equals 12, so we immediately con uh, conclude that uh, y squared equals 12, so that means that y equals square root of 12. Now, both of these guys, square root of 8 and the square root of 12, can be simplified. And that's going to turn out to be important because we're going to see something that we saw before, and I will remember to uh, add the both diagonals this time. Uh, square root of 8, you should pay attention right here as best you can, 
check that out. Square root of 12. And what did I do? I looked for the perfect square inside the number under the radical sign. And now I'm simplifying in both cases. This becomes 2 radical 2. Why? 4 is a perfect square. And uh, what does this become? Well, same idea, 2 radical 3. Oh, that's interesting. So there we go. The, um, the diagonal of one of these guys is 2 radical 3. But then we go again, and 2 radical 3 plus 2 radical 3, the sum of the diagonals is what? 4 radical 3. Oh, I'm starting to see patterns there. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, down the road, okay? Uh, interesting observation we made there. Uh, I plan to talk more about that. And then very quickly, still have a little time on this video. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the problem, and it's an easy one to do. I asked if you could do it, and I have a cone, and here's my cone. And there's the slant, okay? And the slant of the cone is 10. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. And the diameter is 12. So you don't have the height of the cone this time. You only have the slant. So this turns into a hypotenuse. Oh my God, it ends in a 10. It has to be a triple. Otherwise, we need a calculator. And so what I do is I do a little razzle-dazzle here. There's the diameter. Half of the diameter is the radius, which is 6. Drop the height down there, and there it is. 10, 6. What number is missing, as we talked about so many times before this crisis hit? It's a 6, 8, 10. So the height is 10. So it's very typical of 8th grade. They give you data, and you go back and you uh, solve from that data uh, using all the little tricks that you know. So now I can find the volume that easy. Uh, the volume is 1 third pi uh, uh, 6 squared times 8. And isn't that nice? We can do a little simple math. It's very nice to have these uh, multiples of each other so we don't have to go nuts and 48 times 2 and the answer is quite an easy one they like to ask it too on the common core test 96 pi so that was posed to you without me doing it i'm going to put that in one of your homeworks for today one that you can do all right but in the future though we won't be going to such great lengths to uh, avoid um, the hat or the radical sign uh, we're going to little by little incorporate it into our learning and uh, in the in the um, for the cause of getting ready for high school, uh, we'll definitely look much more closer into these guys. And finally, the last problem uh, is one that will also pop up in your homeworks as we go ahead. There's the volume 21. And now I'm solving this problem here where I imagined I had this monster container full of water and I had this can or a bucket of some sorts and I'm dipping it in and I'm putting it inside this jacuzzi, and I'm calling everything units, and my job now is just to solve this thing, uh, given the data. And here we go, uh, the radius, nice number, 3, r equals 3. The height of this um, so-called can is 9, I believe. I'm seeing that number there. That's good. And then the radius of this guy is 9 as well. As I mentioned before, we'll turn these into conversion or real real world problems, um, uh, definitely. So the idea is how many of these cans does it take to fill up the jacuzzi? That's the simple question here. So what you do is you may turn it into a ratio. We'll do the jacuzzi divided by the um, can. And then we'll get a ratio and we'll be able to clearly understand how many cans it takes to fill up the jacuzzi right to the top. So let's do the math here. We have, um, putting the jacuzzi on top, by the way, that makes a lot of sense. We have 2 thirds pi r cubed divided by pi r squared, whoops, 3 squared, sorry, times 9. 
okay? So we're going to um, do some math here, reduce everything, and the ratio we come up with will be the number of cans that fills up the jacuzzi. I better hurry up here. So I quickly uh, do this over here, and I have two thirds pi 999 divided by pi 339. Why am I doing this? I want to simplify. I want to get rid of the numbers where I can. I'm going to rewrite this on the bottom over here, and I have 2 uh, pi 399 divided by pi 339. As I go along, cancel, cancel, uh, cancel again. The pi's cancel. And what's left here, like we're looking carefully, what's left here? And the answer is what? 6 over 1. And if there are no math mistakes here, which I don't think there are, um, then the answer is going to be 6 buckets fill up this jacuzzi. And I'll follow that idea up uh, later, okay?